Hey, this is Elijah with the Oxygen Team, and today we're going to dive into images. Not just the oxygen image element, but rather a better understanding of images on the web and how to work with them efficiently. So here I have a section with an image in it, and I'm loading the image via URL and oxygen. Now I'm going to add another section with some columns. And I'm gonna set this to three columns. And in one of these columns, I'm gonna drop in another image. So we'll have two images on this page. And I'm switching over to image URL now, uh, just to demonstrate something before we explore the media library option. So let's save this and let's make some observations on the front end. So let's jump up here. And here we are, we've just loaded the page in. I may have to refresh because I wanna pull up my network tab in DevTools. And I have image selected here, so I'll only see images that are being loaded. And if you look here, first let me clear my cache so that we see the uncached loading. So we have 176 kilobytes and 35 kilobytes being loaded here for just these two images, which is actually not that bad because these are pretty large images. But the problem is we can't even see the images on the page, and yet they're still being loaded. So there's something called lazy loading that lets us address that particular issue. So let's jump over to oxygen and let's just tick a couple of boxes here. We're gonna stay on the image URL for now, but we're gonna tick the lazy load box here and the lazy load box here. Now let's take a look at what the difference is in our network tab when we refresh this page. Control Shift R or Command Shift R to refresh without the cache. And you can see here that the images aren't visible, so they're not being loaded. Now, you can see when I resize my browser there, one of these images popped in, but let's, let's look at what this looks like with a more reasonably sized browser. So let's refresh. We have one of the images there, but then as we scroll down, we're gonna see another one pop in. Let's keep going, and there it goes. So with lazy loading, we avoid loading images that aren't visible initially. Now, Oxygen's lazy loading is just using native browser lazy loading, which means the distance at which the images start getting loaded depends on a few factors, one of which is your internet speed. So it's going to try to make sure that that image is loaded before you scroll to it. So for my case, it loads quite a bit earlier on the page than you might expect. So uh, if we refresh again, you'll see that that top image is already being loaded before I scroll, even though it's pretty far down. Now, if we duplicate one of these other sections and save and take a look on the front end, we should see that that first image is no longer being loaded until we scroll a little bit and then it gets loaded. And that's because my internet speed's not great, so it says, hey, it's gonna take a minute to load this image. Let's go ahead and start it a little earlier than we would for someone with a faster internet speed. So this is just a little performance feature that's gonna help your images that aren't straight in the first visible part of your page be much more performant. Now, the other thing is, let's take a look at the image itself and what it looks like. So let's just copy the image URL and let's jump over here and take a look. So this is a pretty big image. Now, what happens if we use an image like this in a space like this? So let's move this down here. Now let's save this and let's jump up here and see what we have. I'm gonna move the dev tools down a bit out of the way. So if we right click and inspect this image, you'll see that the rendered size is 320 pixels wide by 213 pixels. But the actual size of the image being loaded, which impacts how much data is being downloaded, is 1,312 pixels wide by 874 pixels. So we've got like 1,000 pixels of width there that we're loading that we really don't need to load. Let's look at this one as well and see what that looks like. Similar here, 320 by 213 is what we need, but it's loading uh, an image that's over 1,000 pixels wide. So how can we take care of that? WordPress has something called source set baked in, which means when you upload an image, it's capable of generating multiple sizes of that image. And if you leverage source set, which is an attribute on your image elements, it can tell the browser which size of image to load depending on the width 
of the viewport. So we're gonna take a look at what that looks like here, but first I wanna note the size of these images in the network tab. So we have 35.9 kilobytes and 176 kilobytes. Let me note those down really quickly. And now we're gonna go back into Oxygen and do a few things here. First, let's get rid of this section that we no longer need. And let's start with this image on the left. We're already lazy loading it, so that's gonna help the initial load of the website. It's gonna generally make your performance metrics look better when you're testing performance and things like that. But why load an image that's over 1,000 pixels wide when we only need 320 pixels or so? And that's where we get into source set, which we can use if we switch over to media library. Let's go select that image again. And first, let's break this image out on its own so that we can see what the sizes actually do. So by default, this is set to full size, which is gonna be just like loading it via the image URL. But we have a selection of other sizes available. So we can go to large, which is a little bit smaller than full, and we can go to medium. Uh, medium looks about the right size for what we need. So let's drop that in down here and we will center everything in that column. And then we'll do the same thing over here. So we're gonna to browse to that image and we're gonna set the size to medium. Now this is not source set. I mentioned source set because it ties into the sizes concept, but this is simply selecting the appropriate size from the media library in WordPress, which is really a good idea if you're displaying very large images at smaller sizes. So now we've selected the smaller size, the medium size. Let's save this and let's take a look at our size savings here. So we had 35.9 and 176. Now let's refresh. And when we scroll down and those get loaded, we see now, look at that, seven kilobytes and 17.5 kilobytes. So what's the savings that we got there? Let me run some quick math. So if I'm not way off on my numbers here, I think we saved about 187 kilobytes, which isn't much for just these two images, but that could really add up if you had a lot of images on your site and they're displayed in a smaller section like this and you don't need that full size image. You can save a ton of trouble by loading the size that you need. Now let's take a look at these elements now that we're using the media library and let's talk about that source set. First of all, we have a sizes attribute that tells us some information about the sizes available and we have the source set attribute, which is empty right now because we're using a very small size of the image. But let's, let's go up here and add another section here we're gonna drag one of these down and we'll go back to something like the full size. And let's take a look at what source set does. Let's scroll down and inspect this image. And you can see now we have the source, which is of an intrinsic size of 1,312 pixels. But we have these other options here too in the source set attribute. So this first one is the one we're using now. And you can see here that we have a few different options with defined widths next to them. So this one's 300, this one's 1312, uh, and this one is 1024, right? So this tells me that if our browser or viewport is below 300 pixels wide, then we should be loading this much smaller image, which is a 300 by 200 version of the image. So first, let's refresh and look at how big this image is. Actually, we don't need to refresh. We'll just look here, and it is 35.6 kilobytes. That's the image that we're loading right now. And we can see this over here in the network tab. Once again, 35.9 or so. So what happens if we step down in size and reload the page to simulate someone on a mobile device visiting the site. Pay attention to this 35.9 kilobyte number. So let's hard refresh this. So now you can see here that our 39.5 kilobyte image became 23.8 kilobytes and it's loading a smaller version of the image. This image is 768 by 512. This image version was generated automatically by WordPress to allow you to save data when loading images on smaller viewports. So that's a really nice feature that in combination with lazy loading can really help you out with images on your site.
Now let's take a look at some of the other things we can do with images. And we're gonna stay over here on the media library option because that's really the way you should be loading images and it allows you to leverage things like source set and sizes. Now we have a few other options here that we can use which are more design options, but let's take a look at those. Let's set a width on this image of 300 pixels and a height of 500 to give it a really weird kind of situation. Now, the nice thing is we can fix this. If we need to display this image in a strange way like this, we can use the object fit dropdown to change the way the image fits within the image's frame. And we can use cover to get this type of effect. We can use contain to get that type of effect. Fill, which brings us back to the area we really don't want to be in. And we can use scale down and back to none. I usually like to use cover in these instances, and then you can control the object position. By default, it's set to center center, but you could say something like left center, right center, or you can use percentages like 50% and 50%, which would bring us back to center center, or something like 20% and 30%. Now it's not moving up and down because this is set to cover and it's already the full height of the frame. But if we go to something like none, then we can see the effect of that. So let's go to center, center. Let's change that to center top. And now you can see we're oriented more towards the top of the image. So this gives us the ability to adjust the way our image fills the frame. Let's get rid of the height. Now we have this other thing called aspect ratio. This allows us to literally determine an aspect ratio for the image. So if we want a square image, we could set this to one. And as long as we haven't defined the height as something weird, it's gonna respect that aspect ratio based on the width. So no matter how wide we make this, it's always gonna be square, which is really, really nice for responsive image behavior because you could set it to something like 100%, and then when you scale down, it's gonna maintain that square aspect ratio. But this image is probably, say, a 16 by nine. So we can plug in an aspect ratio like 16 by nine, and that image is gonna maintain that aspect ratio all the way down, which is super handy. Now, the final thing I wanna talk about is an accessibility concern, which is alt text. Every single image you have that has informational value to it needs alt text. If it's purely decorative, it doesn't, and you'll have to refer to the accessibility guidelines available on the web to determine whether your images need alt text or not. But generally, if there's an image that presents something that all users need to understand, your image needs alt text. Traditionally in Oxygen, you've had to go in and plug in your alt text manually. But while using the media library option, it's gonna pull the alt text from the media library. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So let's jump up to the front end here. We have this image, let's inspect it and see what our alt is. Now I've not added an alt to this, so we have an empty alt attribute down here. But let's go back to the media library and fix that up. We'll jump back to WordPress and go to media and library. Now let's select our image and let's take a look at the alternative text, right? So alt text, there's kind of an art to alt text because it needs to present information in a clear way, but it also needs to represent what the image looks like. So there's a balance between technicality and artistry. And that's something you'll have to kind of feel out on your own. There are some recommendations out there on the web, some really good articles on how to write good alt text. So I recommend you check some of those out. But for this, we're gonna say, two hands forming a heart shape silhouetted against a sunset. That should be enough for someone using, for instance, a screen reader to understand what this image is and what it represents. Now, if there was written text in the image and things like that, you might wanna reconsider the way you write your alt text to make sure the same information is reaching users who are using a screen reader as users who are not. But now we've gone in and set the alt text on this image. Now the beauty is we could go ahead and step through each of our images in the library just like that very, very quickly and set up alt text for all of our images if we forgot to when we initially uploaded them. And now that we've set that, if we jump up to oxygen, we're gonna see that our alt text attribute has been filled from the media library. And if we decide, oh no, this is wrong, I need to change this, we can go back into the media library and change it to 
three hands. Of course, that's not correct. But to illustrate the point, if we refresh, now our alt text says three hands. So this is a huge step towards making your websites accessible. And in Oxygen, we just try to make it a little bit easier to pull those alt text values from the media library automatically. But there are some users who would prefer to set these via something like dynamic data. Now let me show you how you can do that without having to go back to using the old image URL method. So let's jump into Oxygen on here. And first, there's one thing I want to address. I did format the aspect ratio wrong. It needs to be 16 slash 9, not a colon. That's not how it's written. If we look at the MD and web docs, this is how you're supposed to write it. So make sure you're using that slash or a single value if you want a square value. So back to here and the alt text situation. So right now, this image is pulling the alt text from the media library. But let's say we want the alt text to be pulled dynamically for some reason. We can do that by overriding the alt text under advanced attributes. We can add an attribute of alt, and then we can type whatever we want here. And if we save and jump up to the front end, we're going to see that our manually entered alt text is now being used. So I think the cases where you'll want to do this will be rather rare, but just for whatever reason, if you need to override it, you absolutely can. But as a general rule, I would recommend deferring to the media library unless the context in which the image is being used demands that the alt text be changed. So I've gotten rid of that alt attribute that I manually added, and now we're back to the media library value. So there's a lot more to working with images than you might think at face value. And I think some of these tips and tricks and tools that Oxygen provides will help you get more out of your images, more performance, better accessibility without having to reach too hard to attain those goals. So again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and that's a little bit about how to work with images in more detail in Oxygen. Thank you very much for watching.